Hello, and again, welcome to the CertainTeed Right Way to Insulate training workshop. Today, we're going to learn how to insulate attic areas and cathedral ceilings with bats the right way. There's also a tape on insulating attic areas with blown-in insulation, which you should watch as well. We'll be using many of the same installation methods as when we install bats in walls. However, these attic bats are usually thicker because upper areas of the house are subjected to greater temperature extremes during the year and require higher R values. Also, the bats are generally wider and shorter, usually 23 or 24 inches wide and 48 inches long. And like sidewalls, these bats can be craft-faced or unfaced. It's important to have good attic ventilation. So before you start to insulate, check to see if the house has eave vents. If the house does have eave vents, you should install baffles before insulating. Baffles assure that insulation doesn't block the vents because attic ventilation is very important in reducing heat and moisture buildup. In this case, our installer sees that the house has vents and he's installing attic baffles at each vent as he goes. To reach the ceiling, you'll probably need either a scaffold or a ladder, or stilts if local regulations permit them. Check with your supervisor. Before you begin, cut open some bat bags and set the bats on end around the room if you're using stilts. That way, you can reach down for the bats without having to get down from the stilts. If you're using scaffolding, place some bats up where you're working so you don't have to get up and down too often. Start in one corner and push a bat up into the joist space. Make sure it covers the top plate of the wall. Staple as you go. Continue to add bats, pushing them snugly up against the end of the first bat with no gap. Be careful not to block roof or soffit vents. These faced bats are installed basically the same way as for sidewalls. Staple the bats with staples at least every 8 inches. Remember that the facing side of the insulation should be down toward the inside of the house. To avoid overheating, don't insulate closer than 3 inches from recessed lighting fixtures. Incidentally, this does not apply to IC type insulated ceiling fixtures. Look for IC identification on the fixture. When you're working with craft face bats near hot lights, cut the facing back three inches. Either cut the facing away or use unfaced insulation around chimneys, flues, or other hot areas. Remember, the vapor retarder is flammable. Keep the facing a minimum of three inches away from heated flue pipes and chimneys. Most of the time, ceiling bats are installed from below. But if the ceiling drywall is already in place, then you'll install the insulation from the attic. Be careful walking. Don't step off the joists. Drywall won't support your weight. Place the craft-faced insulation down between the joists, on top of the drywall, and with the facing down toward the interior of the house. Be careful not to compress the insulation. When you compress insulation, you lower its R-value. Cut the insulation to fit snugly around cross braces and other obstructions. By the way, there may be some jobs that call for laying down a vapor retarder first and then laying unfaced insulation down between the joists on top of the poly. If you do use poly, be sure to staple it in smoothly and overlap it wherever you use a second piece so the vapor retarder is continuous and without gaps. This rarely comes up, but some jobs may call for a combination of batting and blowing. This can be when a craft vapor retarder is desired, and then to add R value, the attic is blown. In this case, the bat crew installs the craft bats in the ceiling, let's say R11 bats. Then, after the drywallers finish, the blow crew comes in and adds insole safe to the specified R value, blowing right on top of the bats. Before you leave the attic, remember to insulate the back of the access cover by nailing or stapling a piece of insulation to the back of the board or fasten it with glue.
Installing insulation in a cathedral ceiling is a little different. As with other areas, you can use either craft-faced bats or unfaced bats with a poly vapor retarder. With this type of ceiling, you should leave an air space approximately one inch between the insulation and the roof deck. This allows ventilation to keep the roof deck cooler. And if you're using faced insulation, be sure that no facing is within three inches of non-IC light fixtures. Remember, craft and foil facing is flammable. As you work, be sure to butt the ends of the bats closely so there are no gaps and it's best to overlap the facing at the ends, again, to prevent gaps. If the insulation you're using is thicker than the joist space, then you must install baffles over the entire length of the roof deck surface to allow for ventilation of the roof. If the bat completely fills the cavity with no room for air circulation behind the bat, then you must allow for airflow up to the ridge vent. Install baffles leading from the soffit vent up to the roof deck to the ridge vent. On this job, our installer is using special certain teed cathedral ceiling bats. There are two sizes of cathedral ceiling bats. Eight and one quarter inch thick, R30, and 10 inch thick, R38. These bats are not as thick as standard R30 and R38 bats and allow space for ventilation without the need to install baffles. Also, they're wider than standard ceiling bats. These are 24 inches wide, not 23. Let's summarize what you've learned. Insulation for attics is usually thicker than wall bats. These bats can be either faced or unfaced with a separate application of polyfilm, just like for walls. Do not block eave vents. Allow three inches of space around recessed lighting fixtures, unless they're IC type fixtures. Keep facing three inches away from heated flue pipes or chimneys. Stuff unfaced insulation around chimneys or other openings. Never use faced insulation in areas that can get very hot, like chimneys or light fixtures. Don't leave gaps. Gaps mean energy loss. Insulate the back of the access hole cover. Cathedral ceilings usually require an airspace. Or if that's not possible because the job requires thick insulation, baffles must be installed or use special certainteed cathedral ceiling bats. Remember, a good job means that there are no spaces for energy loss. And that completes this session on insulating cathedral ceilings and attics with bats. We'll see you next time.